Okay. So let's start. So we'll start about the this chapter. This is chapter number five. And in this chapter, we will talk about ocean and fisheries. So first of all, we will see the importance of the oceans. Now, as you know that oceans are very important part of our life on earth, and they are sources of number one, food. They are providing food in the form of fish. It means the fin fish, shellfish, and other animals which you are eating from them, crabs, like jellyfish and all these things. So you are eating them and some other animals also eating them. So it is a source of food for humans as well as for other animals also. For example, seagulls and other birds, they also eat the fish from the sea. So first of all, the importance of the sea in or the ocean in the life is in they provide food. After that, the main fisheries are located on the continental shelf. Now they have divided the ocean in different layers. Let's say this is the ocean. In this ocean, they have divided it into different layers. Different layers means that according to the depth. So if you see, for example, ocean start from here and you go down up to 200 meter, up to 200 meter means from the top till 200 meter, that area means that water is known as continental shelves. Shelf, shelf is the plural of shelf. So here, you will find the most number of the fish you will find there. And what is the reason? Because water is shallow, means not much deep, and light can penetrate there. So light can penetrate up to this 200 meters, and more oxygen as well as nutrients are abundant on the shelf. It means that why you will find more fisheries up to 200 meters area. It has a reason. Number one, water is shallow. Due to that, the light will reach till there. Penetrate mean can pass through. Penetrate mean pass through. And you have nutrients there also. And abundant, abundant mean large amount large amount. So you have light there, you have nutrients there, you have oxygen there. So this continental shelf is very suitable or favorable place for the fish. Now, what other things you can find from the oceans? Chemical and building materials. Many materials, for example, if you remember, we talk about erosion. We talk about erosion. And in erosion, we saw what we said that, that first of all, weathering happens. We studied about weathering and erosion. If you remember, I told you, what do you mean by weathering? Weathering means, for example, you have a big rock. This is a big rock. And it starts to break down into small pieces with the air, with rain, with the snow. When it will break down into small pieces, so this process is known as weathering. What is weathering? The broken breaking down of rock into small particles due to rain, due to air, due to snow, due to heat. So that's known as weathering. And after the weathering, these small particles, they are moving from one place to another. Sometimes they move from one place to another with the help of rain, and sometimes with the help of air, and sometimes with the help of animals, like this. And eventually, they will come to the rivers. And you know that rivers, finally, they fall in the ocean. So lot of raw particles are sediments, they due to weathering and erosion, they are coming to the ocean. 
so you can say that ocean has lot of amount of that materials which is coming due to erosion and that material in the form of sediments and they are inside the ocean now again now see here many materials in the oceans have been eroded from the land where rain and wind break down the rocks and are carried into the ocean via rivers so they came into the ocean from the river so here we will see them again that what are the other things now we just studied that we are getting food and after that we are getting chemical and building materials now we will see that some other things are there also what are they now salt you know the sea water is full of salt and if you will heat it or it will evaporate if the sea water will evaporate due to hot sun so what will happen the salt is left behind the salt will be left behind so it mean that from the ocean you can get salt also and after that the diamond they you will under the you can say ocean floor you can find more diamond as compared to the land but on the other hand it is very difficult to mine them from under the ocean it's a difficult process okay only thing what you can do you have to dredge them you have to dredge them now we'll see what do you mean by the dredge now let's say you have this sea it is full of water and this is the bed of the sea okay in this you will find that maybe here down under the bed you have minerals like diamond and other things so it is difficult you will go you will dig it and then here you will search the diamond so what they are doing they are taking all this mud or sand together out with the help of the machinery they are taking all this mud mud mean it has the sand it has like a stone whatever they take it out when they take it out and then they will when comes out then they search for the minerals inside it so this process is known as dredged so you can say clear the bed of harbor mean near the port river or other areas of water by scooping out scooping means take out like uh, you know when you are eating the ice cream so they ask how many scoop how many scoops you say one scoop scoop is like a like this a uh, spoon like this so they will put in the ice cream and they will make a round thing and they put on your you can say ice cream here like this so that is scooping 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 means they will take out that sand or mud from the river from the ocean and then after that they will check it they will clear it and they will find the minerals from it is it clear any confusion yes no. okay good after that they are saying you are also getting the sand and gravel and crushed rocks the mine for the construction industry now you can also get the sand you know the sand is used to make the house to make the cement to make the glass and gravel means small pieces of the stone they are also used crushed rocks are also used in the construction construction of road construction of house you are also getting it from the ocean or also the rivers they are saying physical damage can be caused but whenever you are taking 
sand gravel or rocks out of sea so you should take care these things you should keep in your mind these following things number 1 that physical damage can be caused to sea bed and associated habitat if care is not taken now let's say this is the sea and here you will find the sea bed let's say this is the sea bed here okay so they are saying that whenever you want to take this out you want to take this sand out so do it gently take it slowly don't dig it too hard maybe inside this mud you have lot of organisms you have lot of organisms or maybe this mud is habitat for lot of organisms so the care should be adopted you should take care when you are taking the sand out of a river out of a ocean after that fine particles fine particle cloud that are produced resettled and interfere with the photosynthesis now when you are for example when you take out something from the sea so you'll find that our sand particles remain in the water when you taking out so some of the sand is mixed in the water and the particles are very small fine means very small particles clouds then you can say like a cloud when they are coming like this they looks like a cloud when all together coming slowly so they are saying that they if they will fall if they will fall on the plants here and the plants will be buried under them so then the photosynthesis process will be affected and sometime that heavy metals some metals also there they will go to the food chain maybe they will go to the like uh, plants they will disturb them maybe the fish will eat them and lot of things can happen so they should be uh you can say proper care should be taken while you are taking out these things from the ocean okay after that you are also getting the crude oil crude oil means petroleum crude oil means in crude oil is a american word and in british you have petroleum same meaning means the black thing the black thing which comes out from the ground that's known as crude oil so when they will do the distillation fraction distillation of crude oil then they are getting petrol from it they are getting diesel from it they are getting bitumen from it in chemistry you are doing all this one so we are saying that from the oceans you are also getting the crude oil because if you see in saudi arabia this damam this jubail area all this you have lot of oil and it is inside the sea also so offshore drilling rigs they have the rigs there and from that they are taking the oil so you are getting oil also from the ocean after that wave energy if you remember when we did the chapter number 2 in energy we talk about wave energy the energy which is getting from the waves because the water waves they are moving up and down they have a energy they are putting special devices and produce electricity so you can get also wave energy from the ocean after that the tidal energy tidal energy you know that the high tide that i told you in the night they and sometimes uh, you can say that uh, in some months when the moon is full the tides are very high and when the tides are very high so water can be stored near reservoirs from the ocean water will come to the reservoir and then when the tides become low again this water will send back to the ocean and you put a turbine here that turbine moves and produce electricity so you that is known as tidal energy and sometime when the waves are very high they put some instruments in the wave they move up and down and they produce electricity 
So you can, if you have any confusion, you can go to chapter two notes and also the videos. So you can inshallah get your concept clear from there. So this is the energy you are getting. After that, they're saying the oceans, they are big source of tourism. Tourism means the people are coming there to visit, to spend their vacation, to enjoy their leisure time like this. So during that, they're saying the seaside is a major tourist attraction. The people of M-E-D-C-S, who will tell me what does it mean? M-E-D-C-S, anyone? Yes, please. Anyone can tell me what doing by M E D C S. Like the the rich country. Yes, very good. Who is this? Uh, Amal. Amal, very good. Most economic developed countries. I told you we did the M E D. We did L E D C S. Less economic development countries. So please keep me in mind, really, I appreciate. Okay, so the people of most, most economically developed countries, they are coming to the seasides to see the natural beauty and especially the coral reefs, which are inside the sea to see that. What, so this is the tourism. And also some people are coming for diving, snorkeling, wind surfing, jet skiing, that deep sea fishing, scuba diving, a lot of things they have activities this one. So that's also comes in tourism. And after that, you saw that the people, they are going to in the cruise, cruise mean the cruise ships, they are going and they are even the people, they are traveling from one place to another place in the, you can say ship and also they, if they can see the whales and the dolphin, this is like a tourism, okay? So the people are coming and they spend their time. So it means that when we are talking about the tourism, so sea will create a lot of tourism. See, create a lot of tourism opportunities and we have just discussed them, what are the opportunities we have. Okay. After that, the ocean, they also use as a mean of transport, mean just like a medium of a transport. For example, inside the sea, you have ship and ship are important to transport people and goods, especially the goods, because people, if the area, you can say distance is less than maybe the people using this one. But if the distance is a lot of so people are using the planes, airplanes now, okay? But even some countries, still the people using ship as a method of the transportation. Now, they're saying that there are different type of the ship and according to their use, okay? Now, they, however, shipping is less common to transport people now due to the advent of aviation, as I told you, due to aeroplanes, the people do not prefer the ships because they take too much time as compared to the airplanes. But the player cruises are still an important economical sector and bulk freight is best. Freight means that when you are transferring the goods, mean the substances, goods, bulk mean in a large quantity. For example, you are sending the cargo. Maybe you are sending the cargo to your country, Sudan, or we are sending to Pakistan. So mostly they go by the ship because it's cheaper. It's take much time. It, it will take maybe 35 days or 40 days. And otherwise, other while if you see the uh, aeroplane, they take like seven days to 10 days, but it's become cheaper. So people are using because you have a large quantity of the goods. Now we will see different type of ship and their uses. 
Okay. Number one is bulk carriers. What is the number one? Bulk carriers. What is bulk carrier? They are saying that bulk, as I told you, bulk means in a huge amount. Huge amount. Carrier means something takes. So this uh, ship, it will take a very large amount of food, such as rice and wheat and other, you can say, crops. You can see here, they have special con container, mean boxes. And each box, for example, it is very deep down inside. So they can store different items here. Maybe here they can store rice, here they can store wheat, here they can store corn, here they can store, store beans, anything. So they are separated from each other. So this type of ship in which they transport a large amount, huge amount of food, such as rice, wheat, corn, other beans. So that is known as bulk carriers. It has special contents inside the boxes, separate boxes, and you can take the different things together also. And then when it will go to the port, so they will take it out like this. So they can take it out like this. They put a machine and one by one, they can take it out like this from the machine. So that is known as bulk carriers. After that, you have container ships. Container ships, you can see from the name that they have container on them. You know the container. Container is a rectangular box. And in this box, they are transporting the goods. They are transporting the things inside them. And just see how they are kept over each other. So all they are used for a cargo purpose. And the ship which will take the containers from one place to another, that is known as container ship. Entire load is carried in a lorry size container. So these container after that, they will put on the trucks. They will put on the trucks and these trucks, maybe you saw on the roads, they are going to Makkah, Jeddah, and these containers are on them. Okay, so these are known as that container ships. And this is also known as containerization, 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 this one. This process, moving container from one place to another. Okay. After that, you can see here when it reach at the port, and now at the port they are removed in a side. You can see from here they are transferred here one by one. So that is known as container ship. Any confusion? Uh, no. Okay. After that, you have tankers. You have tankers. Tankers, from the name, you can see, they transport fluids. Fluids mean liquids and gases. In chemistry, you are using the term fluid. Fluid mean liquid or gas, both comes in fluids. So these ships, they are specially used for transferring the fluid from one place to another. That can be petroleum, that can be natural gas. So they transfer from one place to another. And sometimes they also transport vegetable oil and wine from one place to another. So they are known as tankers. Now we'll see how they look like. Now see this diagram. They are like this. Okay. And all this area, this one, you can see all this area. It is very deep. Even inside the sea, you have this one. It is all filled with the fluid, which can be oil, which can be gas, anything. It is filled with that. 
and remember if you remember when we did the oil spills we said that oil spills sometime they get accident they damage so oil start to come out from the tankers and it causes the pollution that one so that also tankers which take the oil from one place to another and when these tankers reaches to the port mean the harbor so they will fit with the pipelines you can see here they have the pipelines so they will come and with the help of these pipelines the liquid will come and they will take it to the land okay so with the help of these pipelines so that is known as tanker after that you have refrigerated ships or reefer ship both names can be used for this type of ship from the refrigerated ships it comes to your mind which thing comes to your mind refrigerator means which you are using at home for making the things cool or you are keeping your food so it will not spoil it will not be you can say spoiled by the bacteria refer also the same thing so if in the exam they ask about refrigerated ship or refer ship no need to confuse it is the name of the same thing two names of the same thing so they are saying that it is used when you want to transport vegetables fruits fish and other dairy products dairy means like uh, butter like milk like other thing so because all these things they need very cold temperature otherwise they will decay due to bacteria they will decompose and they will spoil so they need a ship which has a system which can keep them cool so that type of a ship is known as refrigerated ship or refer ship so this is another type of the ship this is another type you can see mean the same but it's a company maybe you saw when you are buying the pine apple and other thing this company maybe you saw in panda also dolly this company is making the food and this is their refrigerated ship and they are transporting the ship from we can say from one place to another is it clear yes okay good after that you have roll on roll of ships these ships they are used to transport the vehicles you can see this one they are very large and inside them you will find different floors you can see here ground floor maybe down you have more first floor second floor third floor and here the car they can be drived inside okay normally and they will park them like a parking and then these type of the ship they transfer the cars from one place to another especially all the cars in saudi arabia if they are coming from japan or from korea they are coming by the ship because in the aeroplane they cannot take that much quantity and it's very expensive to bring them with it so this type of a ship which is used to transport vehicles together their loads and it doesn't mean that you have only the empty vehicle sometime the complete trawler with the load they come with it and they stand inside it and then they move it from one place to another so that type of ship is known as roll on mean going inside and roll off mean coming outside ships so they are known as roll on and roll off ships 
see here like this they are going inside the cars by driving they are taking them inside and when they reach the place they are coming out not only cars big trucks all they are coming here so they are known as roll on and roll off trucks is it clear yes okay after that you have postal trading vessels vessel they are also used uh, you can say that uh, for coastal areas they are not big if you compare their size with other ship they are not big so they are used from small places from for example the places which are close together maybe they are 100 km 50 km like this so they are using these so use for trade between places they that are close together especially in islands for example from one island other is here and then from this island to this island they are using these ships even if they can take people sometimes they can take also cars and you can you use for a lot of purposes so that's known as coastal trading vessels this is also another type so they are smaller in size after that ferries you know the ferries ferries you can see the people even your sudan if you go to nile you have lot of ferries there people are uh, sitting on them enjoying even they are taking tea in the night there so all these ferries and sometime they will take you the tour of the nile and so they are known as ferries and sometime ferries are big they can take the cars with them used for mainly movement of foot passengers sometime with their cars and off foot passengers mean the people they are using their cars mainly between islands or between main lands and the island so if you have two islands it between them or if you have land big land and then you have a island like this so they are using that one so that's known as ferries you can see here also they are this bigger in the size and here you can say that the cars and other things can come here so that's also known as ferry is it clear any confusion no okay now we will talk about